When we start oil painting, we might be a little bit nervous or unsure of how to use oil paint combined with painting mediums, such as linseed oil, walnut oil, poppy oil, turpentine, sansodor, gamsol, the list goes on. What are the differences between them and how do we combine them in our work? You've probably heard of the fat over lean rule. This is not anything to be afraid of. It's very simple. It basically states that as you paint an oil painting, you want to start with a lean medium and add more fat to it as you continue to paint. More fat simply means a higher oil content. A lean medium will have a higher content of mineral spirits or solvents, so that's your turpentine and white spirit. A fat medium will have a higher oil content. This means it will contain more linseed oil or whatever oil you are working with. Solvents evaporate very quickly. This is why we use more solvent in the beginning stages of a painting with our lean medium. This way the solvent will evaporate and leave our painting dry so we can continue painting on it the next day. So why do we work fat over lean? There is a risk when we paint with a fast drying medium on top of a slow drying medium that the slow drying layer will not be completely dry. And if we paint a layer on top of it that's going to dry very quickly, that layer is at risk of cracking as the layer below it finally dries. We always want the previous layer of paint to be completely dry before we add another layer on top of it. This also combines with another rule you might have heard, which is thick over thin. When we start with thinner layers and add thicker layers on top, this is for the same reason. If we paint very thick layers in the early stages, they're not going to be dry when we go back to work on top of them. With this in mind, when we're first starting a painting, we want to use a painting medium that consists of more white spirit or your solvent and less oil. This layer will dry very quickly and when we go to paint on top of it, we want to use a painting medium that consists of slightly less solvent and more oil. So we're always adding more oil as we continue. None of my paintings have cracked yet and as long as you don't use a very fast drying medium on top of a very slow drying, thick painted layer, you're unlikely to have any problems but it's good to keep it in mind. So, what are the different painting mediums? First, let's take a look at our solvents. We have several. We have turpentine, white spirit, gamsol, odorless mineral spirit, sansodor, low odor solvent, zestit, and several others. So what are the differences between them? Turpentine. This is a strong smelling solvent that is most closely associated with traditional oil painting. It evaporates very quickly and releases a toxic vapor. It can be absorbed through the skin and like all solvents is highly flammable, meaning it catches fire easily. For this reason, all our painting rags, kitchen towel or tissue that has any solvent on it should be put in a metal bin with a lid. Painting rags have been known to spontaneously combust, so don't risk it. For painting, you should buy turpentine from an art store and not from a hardware store, as the artist's quality turpentine will have less impurities. Although saying that, I have used turpentine from a hardware store in the past. A lot of people don't like the smell of turpentine, and when you use solvents, always make sure you have good ventilation in your room or studio. Try and keep a door or window open. We don't want to be breathing in those fumes. We also have mineral spirits. These have a more measured evaporation rate. They shouldn't absorb into the skin, but still be careful. They will dry out your skin nonetheless. We can wear plastic gloves if we like to protect our hands. Now a variation on mineral spirits. We have odorless mineral spirits. These tend to be a little pricier as they have had some of the harmful toxins removed. However, it is still not healthy to breathe them in. Just because we can't smell them doesn't mean they're not in the air. Whilst they do contain less toxins, 
they still contain enough that we don't want to be breathing it in. Gamsol is an odorless mineral spirit that is quite popular. And Sansador is a low odor solvent. Finally, we have citrus based thinners such as Zestit. They smell slightly nicer and Zestit is the most popular one as it's made from citrus oil combined with a non-toxic, non-flammable solvent. This is the safest solvent to use in the studio and some art schools will only let you use this one. There are many kinds of solvent. In my studio today, I'm using a turpentine substitute. It's an odorless mineral spirit. If turpentine gives you a headache, use an odorless mineral spirit instead. We also use these to clean our brushes and palette as the alcohol breaks down the oil. Lots of artists still use turpentine in their studios, but if I were you, definitely experiment with some of the low odor solvents or the citrus based thinners, such as Zestit. Now onto the oils. The most well known oil for painting is linseed oil. You also get sun thickened linseed oil, which is a lot thicker and can be used instead of linseed oil in the later stages of the painting due to its higher fat content. Remember that fat over lean rule? Another variation of linseed oil is stand oil. This has a similar viscosity to sun thickened linseed oil, but it takes even longer to dry. So when we're working for a long time on a painting, we would start with linseed oil, change to sun thickened linseed oil as we progress or stand oil. We mix all of these with a solvent, which should start with the high percentage of solvent to linseed oil, getting less and less as we move forward with the painting. We also have poppy oil. Poppy oil is much paler than linseed oil and has a slower drying time between five to seven days. So if we want to work wet on wet and not have our painting dry as we work on it, poppy oil is a good choice. Walnut oil. Walnut oil is another blow drying oil, but it dries faster than poppy oil. Linseed oil dries faster than both poppy and walnut oil and allows for a greater buildup of layers. We also have Canada balsam. This is a super thick, viscous resin from a balsam fir tree. It makes for a very rich, lustrous medium, especially in the final stages of a painting. We can mix half and half Canada balsam and stand oil, plus a dash of turpentine to loosen the mix. When we mix these together, we create an almost varnish-like final layer to a painting. Its viscosity causes the transitions in your painting to merge by themselves. It is a truly beautiful medium. However, to get started, you can just use linseed oil. And to be honest, you could continue using linseed oil for the rest of your painting life. It's the most well-known and widely used painting oil. It allows you to paint multiple layers easily on top of one another and is a very friendly oil to work with. Just start the painting using mostly solvent with some linseed oil and gradually add more oil as you progress. It's that easy. I hope that made things a bit clearer and easy to understand. Whilst there are many solvents and oils in the market today, it is not necessary for your painting practice to try every single one of them. I normally use a mixture of linseed oil and stand oil in my studio with whatever solvent I happen to have on hand. However, in the later stages of a painting, I do think it's worth experimenting with stand oil and Canada balsam, just to see their effect on your brush marks and transitions. Keep your medium in a palette cup with rounded sides like this one, and when you want to mix your solvent and oil together, a great way to do this is to screw the lid onto your palette cup, run it under hot water and give it a good shake. This combines the oil very well, especially if you're working with a thick medium, such as Canada Balsam. And that's it on solvents and mediums.